Good morning. My name is Amit Shah, and I'm the founder of Wattify. Wattify is a fitness platform that empowers gym owners, coaches, and athletes. Normally, I talk about technology. Today, I'm going to talk about culture, and I'd like to share our cultural transformation with you at Wattify. This is a picture of Lucy, our U.S. office manager, addressing the entire company. Now, if you knew Lucy, you would know, or rather, you'd be shocked to see her speak so confidently. This is what happens when you create an environment that empowers learning and growing. This is what happens when you create a culture that values taking chances, even at the risk of failure. Earlier this year, I shut down our company and invested half a million dollars to get our Lisbon team to the U.S. for Culture Week. Our goal was to define our culture through our purpose and our core values. I'll talk a little bit about our early days and how we got our start at Wattify, what it was like to work at Wattify. I'll talk to you about my personal awakening and finally some lessons learned that can hopefully help you transform or shape your culture at your organization. The year is 2011, it's September, and I'm about to try my first CrossFit class. It looked a lot like this. CrossFit is uh, group fitness, and its backbone is community. It's probably different than many things you've tried before. It's about camaraderie, it's about pushing your limits, and it's about winning together. During my first CrossFit class, the coach approached me and said, what's your name? And then he proceeded to write it on a whiteboard, and I thought, well, that's odd. And then he went over the workout and said, we'll be going through a strength component, a conditioning component, and after the strength component, he yelled out my name and said, what did you lift? And he wrote the result on a whiteboard. Same with the conditioning. What was your performance? What was your time? And it was recorded on a whiteboard. And very quickly, I realized that I was competing. And CrossFit is about healthy competition. It's about competing with your classmates, your other gym mates. And one thing I realized is that there was tremendous power in this data, and it was being easily erased with that whiteboard eraser. And so I created Wattify. And I brought the CrossFit community to the digital era. And we tracked performance through a kiosk and a mobile app. Like many software companies, market demands force us to pivot. And today, we do much more than track performance. We do things like manage memberships, schedules, waivers, contracts, and manage finances. In fact, today, we process over half a billion dollars of transactions around the world. In the early days, we were small. We moved fast. We built features in rapid fire. We worked long hours, sometimes, I would argue, inhumane hours. But here's the thing. We loved it, every moment of it. And we didn't worry about culture. We didn't even talk about culture. If you mentioned the word culture to me in those days, I probably would have scoffed at you. It was something that was just part of our environment. It was something that was gained through osmosis. We were all in the same room. We were friends. And we all wanted the same things. Over the next five years, we grew. We expanded internationally. We even launched some new products. But something was wrong. It didn't feel the same as those early days. And I can't point to a single event or a single a day that uh, changed our culture. But it was something you could feel. Um, unfortunately, we had some unhappy employees. We started making poor decisions. We started valuing skills over culture. And so, like many before me, I went to the one place in the world where you can solve all of your problems, Las Vegas. And it's not what you're thinking. I read a book about a small little shoe company called Zappos and how they differentiated themselves on service and how that service was really powered by an amazing culture. So I went to Vegas to their headquarters and I embarked in their school of wow training. And there I realized that at Zappos, everything was surrounded by culture. All of the business decisions were made based on their core values. In fact, a little bit of advice, if you ever decide to 
interview with Zappos, be nice to the driver that picks you up at the airport. Why? He's a Zappos employee, and they will <clears throat> debrief after your journey from the airport to their office. And they will ask that driver, what was the candidate like? Did they build a personal emotional connection with you? Were they respectful? Did they treat you like a colleague, or did they teach you, treat you less than? And in some instances, they have taken candidates and sent them right back to the airport and said, you're not a cultural fit for us. And something occurred to me. We used to do that at Wattify. Years ago, I interviewed a, a young sales manager, and he was perfect for the job. He had all the skills. He had been there, and he had done that. And we had done everything we could to cater to his needs. Picked him up at the airport, made sure he had his Starbucks in hand. Um, we had lunch together, had cocktails together. And he did, or I guess he failed to do one thing throughout that day, and that was to simply say please and thank you. And in those days, I refused to hire him because of that. So it dawned on me, it wasn't even lunchtime on this first day at Zappos training, and I realized the mistake I had made. I needed to define our culture through our purpose and our core values. It was not something that people were going to learn through osmosis. And more importantly, I had to have the courage, and so did my staff, have the courage and the strength to defend those core values. So, weeks later, we made a large investment and brought the entire team together in the US. We had three goals. One, build personal relationships. Two, define our company purpose. And three, define a set of core values that would, excuse me, that would drive all of our business decision making. So through the week, we laughed, we cried, quite literally, and we shared experiences. My favorite event was probably uh, taking our Lisbon brothers and sisters to see their first baseball game. This brought me personal joy, not that unlike the first time my kids saw Peppa Pig for the first time. So our cultural journey did not end there. It continues to grow. And as we look forward, we noticed an immediate change. There was a sense of optimism in our office. People went out of their way to help one another. And new leaders began to emerge. We also took the time to refine our core values. And here's our 10 core values. What I won't do is share the why behind all these, but I'll share a couple of behavioral changes that I've noticed in the just recent months. One of our senior engineers noticed that he felt like he wasn't investing in others, number seven. And so he decided to lead by example. And so he started to really train and educate the new engineers that joined our team. And sure enough, others followed. Senior engineers in our company now take great pride in showing the younger engineers the way we work and tricks of the trade. In another example, we had a small team raise their hand to the leadership team and express a concern with a new member. Their concern was that they weren't embodying our core values and taking feedback well. The leadership team decided to help coach this individual, and that individual self-selected out. And our, I would argue that's OK. We have our core values. We have our culture. It's not an incorrect or a correct culture, but it is ours, and it won't be for everyone. So how have we built those core values into our organization? They continue to weave into our operations. We have completely revamped our hiring and recruiting process to include our, our culture and core values questioning. We now do things like skills and culture interviews, and our culture interviews always trump our skills interviews. Why? I would argue that I can teach you the skills, but your culture and your core values are something that have evolved over your personal history over years, and I can't change that history. We have done internal curriculum on our core values, so every one of our employees is now certified on our culture. All of our new employees go through culture training and onboarding, and we've created something called the offer. Any new employee that comes in our organization, as they're, as they're getting onboarded and they're getting trained on our company and our core values, should they decide that this is not the place for them, we offer them a one-month severance to walk away. No questions asked. 
We did the same thing or something similar with our existing employees. We made the offer but extended it to two months. And surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly, in one day, our company shrunk by 10%. Some lessons learned. Number one, if you wait, it will be too late. Your, your culture is something that will erode over time. It's not something that happens in a point and place in time. So I would highly encourage you to act now and save yourself the mistake that I made. A simple task that you can do immediately is go back to your organization at the end of this event and send out a survey. Ask your company. Do they understand your purpose? Do they understand your core values? Number two, everyone needs to be involved. And that means everyone. In our instance, when we did Culture Week, we actually invited key customers and partners to join us and provide us their insight into our purpose and our core values. And I would tell you, this is not the job of a single person. I know there are organizations out there that have chief culture officers. I'm not saying it's wrong. We decided that that's not a role for somebody, that everybody needs to embody our core values and everyone needs to defend them. And so we do things like rotating value ambassadors. So our value ambassadors, their job is to make sure that as an organization, we're embodying those, those values. And finally, there is no finish line. This is not something um, that you can check off a task list. We will continue to evolve our culture and evolve our processes and our strategy. It's not an easy task, but if you can create a comp company culture that people love, you will create a lasting differentiator and like us, hopefully, live a fulfilled life. Obrigado.